Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's share a little bit uh, with you of what happened on this day in history in 2008. It's, it's you know, pr pretty popular for uh, big nations you know, across the world to always try to be the first to either go to space or send a spaceship, you know, or, you know, break some you know, astronomical um, feet <laughs> with regard to space. But on this day, China um, eventually got a man walking on space in 2008. His name was Zai Zhigang and became the first Chinese to walk in space. It was part of what was called the Zhenzhou 7 crew on this day. Um, it also was one of um, you know, the technological feat, you know, that Beijing wanted uh, to ensure that they pulled off or they carried out for the rest of the world to see. He entered the spacecraft safely after a walk of about 15 minutes, uh, marking the high point of China's third manned space flight, which uh, had received a blanket media coverage. The risky spacewalk was a step towards China's long-term goal of assembling a space lab and then a larger space station. Um, of course, the Ch Communist Party in China back then also massively celebrated this feat. Its first uh, manned space flight was in 2003, followed by a two-man flight in 2005. And then on this day, Zhang, or Zai Zhigang, as it's pronounced, eventually was the first uh, Chinese to walk on space. Hmm. I was really fascinated because I really don't even understand what this means. You know, where do you land? Where, where exactly in space are you? What planet exactly? <laughs> and, you know... It would just always be fascinating to imagine what this whole experience will be like. Because mm. I remember also when we had those conversations about Elon Musk and um, uh, Richard Branson, you know, taking the first um, 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 flights into space, you know, by, by regular passengers, non-astronauts. Um, there was also people who were mentioned that it's not necessarily going into space space. It's really just going to get to a particular place and then turn back. Um, but for, for, you know, these Chinese and, of course, for the Americans who eventually, who were the first people to walk in, uh, in space, what exactly are you walking on? Is it gravel? Is it red sand? Is it snow? Oh, sorry. I'm trying to figure it out. You know, is there, are the roads over there tarred? <laughs> Comedy Mondays. <laughs> Is it like the beanie red sand? I don't know. You know, um, what? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I can imagine, you know, it might not be walking as we imagined it because, yes, they said um, they wore a $4.4 .4 million suit, which was, you know, really, really heavy. You know, but. <sighs> I'm not a space expert, but trust me, there's no sand or gravel or red yeah, sand. Yeah, so what exactly is it then? Sand. Yeah, well, you could do more research about it. But we know that so many countries, the world powers, the China, the Russia, the US, have all scrambled to get a piece you know, of space to be the first country. So why didn't they bring a little, back, a little bit back? To be on space. And see, let's bring this back home. We have our Nigerian space agency. Why are we not doing anything to get our own Nigerian to be in space? Maybe they could send us out here to be the first Nigerian be because planting the Nigerian flag on space. Many people have been walking in space for a long time. <laughs> We, that's funny <laughs> that's funny that's funny it just is undocumented our people have been walking in space for Am a long time people? yes <laughs> <laughs> so there's no need wasted money with what Nigeria but, space but, but there's a lot with what space exploration can do people are looking for alternative places to inhabit they say the earth is overpopulated there's talks about space tourism and all of that there's really lots of you know, discussions about the science regarding space explorations. And yeah, more research really would, would teach us all more because definitely to the ordinary man, they say, oh, a man works in space. What really is the import? You know, but for world powers, it really is a thing of, you know, basically to show that you have the cap capability because you know what it yeah. takes to build a space. That's, that's really to what this is space. You know about. I mean, about over $4 million, you know, to build the suit, the suit just yeah. to go into space. So it really just, for in my opinion, one of the ways for World Pass to show that they really have the might, the funds, you know, to do what they can and what they will. It feels like it's a, you know, it's a competition between, you know, certain, you know, world powers, you know, the US, China, and, you know, mostly, and Russia. Mm -hmm. um, they've always had that competition um, um, somehow, some way. So I, I think that's also what this, this is about. Mm. I don't think that in our lifetime, 
um, we would ever be at a place where people can now, you know, go, you know, move to space, you know, and live there. I don't mm. think humans will ever be able to achieve that um, in our lifetime. Maybe in another lifetime, you know, they will be able to pull that up. But for now, I don't think that that, that would be possible. Mm. Um, it's still very, very, you know, there's still so much research that needs to be done. And we also don't want to go back and, you know, go over there and bring back aliens hmm. or bring back, um, you know, a new virus <laughs> from space. But we know that um, back in 2016, there was news about Nigeria planning to send a man to space stop by it. 2030. No, yeah, they said we had Please opened our it. own space, we had, you know, sent space satellites. Yeah. And according to them, you know, we we'll use the satellites to track insurgents. And that by 2030, Nigeria would send a man. Nigeria would carry out its planned space mission. No, really, for real. Even though it seems ridiculous. I mean, this is something that the government has, has definitely said. So, um, okay, Nigeria's... Uh, no, hold on. Ni Ni Nigeria's Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Bunaya Ono, we have him on tape saying this will happen by 2030. So just a few more years. You better start putting your beats for, you know, making it to space by 2030. A 12.5 uh, kg of gas is 8,000 naira now. Um, a policeman was killed in Lagos not long ago. Not the street. I think we have too many, too, <laughs> too many, many problems. problems. <laughs> You'll be thinking about, you know, uh, wasted... Nothing stops us from dreaming Nigeria Air didn't even work. <laughs> Let's stop wasting nothing, time. nothing should stop us from dreaming big. Ooh. If Nigeria says space exploration 2030, let's back that up. Once again, we've been doing it from my part of the country. We've been doing it for <laughs> too long. On drumsticks. Yeah, exactly. It's really not <laughs> wasting money. Stay with us. When we come back, David Hundane will be joining us. He has, uh, of course, released a very, very interesting investigative report on why Nigerian passports seem to be having challenges. And uh, the uh, passport booklets, rather, seem to be having challenges. We were talking about that right after the show break.